The Fire Within Podcast. You need a sustainable plan, the right mindset, and the knowledge and inspiration to stoke the fire within. Just like the Phoenix, you can burn your old habits, never turn back, and emerge completely anew. There are no shortcuts. Welcome, Fire Within community. This is the Fire Within Podcast, where we talk about all things health, fitness, and nutrition related. I'm your host, Brandon, with my co-host, Joe. Hello. How are you? My, my thumbs hurt. You have such strong thumbs. Uh, I got was, new mic stands and I like to keep them tight. Get it right. Keep <laughs> it tight. We got a really cool guest today. And we have Abro with us. How's it going, Abro? Doing good, Brandon. How are you? Thank you for having me on this. Yeah, man. We're excited to have you. So Abro uh, is a client of mine, but he's way cooler than just that. <laughs> he's a motorcycle extraordinaire. Ah. Uh, and uh, you got this big 7,500 plus mile ride coming up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Probably be closer to 8,000. Coast to coast yeah. in 18 days. That's it's just insane. So I figured what we do today, we've been working together a little bit. Just want to talk about some of your successes, your struggles and wins with some of the health changes. Mm-hmm. And then I want to spend a lot of time talking about this ride and all the physical challenges coming right up. On, yeah. It's going to be neat. So just tell us a little bit about your health journey first and what made you decide to make start working more consistently towards those changes. Ah, cool, cool. Like la- over the last few years, I've been doing a bunch of stuff and then and not being really focused on the health part or the weight management part of of, of me, basically. <laughs> and then I got some blood work done earlier this year and the numbers were all over the place, right? All over the place. And I was like, this is not what I want because I'm doing things that I'm passionate about and I want to do it for a much longer time than than whatever. So that's when I was like, now this is my wake up call. Let me go ahead, get my nutrition, get my training. Let's focus on stuff. Maybe three or four years ago, like I was still training for powerlifting and stuff. I just never did anything. I lost focus o- over the past few years. So that's when I'm, I was looking around for people and a common, fr- a mutual friend of ours referred me to you. Yeah, Luna. Luna, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she's, hey, this dude is great. He knows his stuff. So check him out. Doesn't hurt. And I was like, yeah, why not? So I, I hit him up and we have our first introduc- introductory session. Yeah. And Man, I was blown away. Like it, it was in his house. He's got a whole gym set up in the garage. And the one thing I'll tell everybody, Brandon, about you is the way you broke stuff down for me, like the nutrition stuff, that just blew my mind. And it just made sense. Instead of just reading about it somewhere, like, hey, do this, do that, do this, do that. You're like, no. So this is how it works. This is what it does to you. The more you take this, the blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so the first session I went back, like when I was driving back home, I was like, Poof, mind blown, man. I was like, damn. This dude knows this here, knows his stuff. So let's get back, let's do it. And then you, I tried to follow it as much. Not, I, I wish I could say that I followed it to a T, as close as possible. That's helped me get a lot of things down, like my blood pressure down, my body fat percentage down, my sugar levels down. I'm down 17 pounds. Yeah. Still a ways to go, but hey, it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. Did you find that like most long rides in my experience on a motorcycle, like you don't stop and grab a salad. Like you're stopping and grabbing like <laughs> the burger with pastrami on yes. top of it, yeah. the hot dogs yeah. smashed into it. Cause they're like all yeah. the motorcycle routes are like, you got to try this dive diner and yes. wash it down yeah, with yeah. six quarts of bourbon. <laughs> like it's not a, it's not a culture that lends itself to healthy practices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be hard to find like a salad somewhere yeah. and be like, Hey, can I get a cob salad? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, like, you can leave. You can leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's morally like wings and like you said, like the loaded fries and, yeah. Yeah. and wash it down with some beer. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a hard thing to eat right when you're traveling. They don't make it easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And we used to have a lot of, Brandon and I used to talk about this, about this a lot. Hey, I'm like, on, I'm out trying to film my videos and I'm going to do my episodes and it's an all day thing. And like, I'm grabbing anything that's quick and easy. I'm not going to go to a restaurant, sit down and be like, hey, can I get a fancy lunch? Uh, and that's where I think he really helped me. You pull up all these websites, like the websites, homepages. The menus. And you look at the menus, see the macros and get an idea of what's good, what's not. And that way it's like great. Like you can go to a fast food joint, but you could still get something at least healthy. moderately healthy. Yeah, yeah. At least a better choice. Yeah. It's not about eating perfect. It's about eating better. Eating better. But man, I'm telling you, every time I see those pictures they have of the loaded fries, I'm like, it's good stuff. And and I'm a, like, damn you, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a ramen place called Miso Ramen, pork belly fries. Oh. And every time I go, I want to try them, but I don't. <laughs> but one of these days, I'm going to try them. Now, tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel, what you're passionate about. What are all these things? 
okay. on the side here. Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel, like it's called Broman Rhapsody. And I love cars. I love motorcycles ever since I was what, a kid. <laughs> and I had this great idea during the COVID pandemic lockdown period where everybody had so much time on their hands. I was like, hey, I always want to do a YouTube channel. So let's go. Let's just let's start. I started working with a few dealerships in Greensboro, Indian, Indian Motorcycle Greensboro and the motorcycles of Greensboro. And I, now it's just I have so much fun doing it. It's uh, I get to ride a new bike every week. I'm going to talk about it. And this, it's the fun part is doing the research and riding it and just putting my thoughts out about how I feel about that bike. Same with cars. I just started working with the BMW of South Point to do a few cars. So it's just it's something that brings so much joy and passion to me. It's So they just lend you the vehicle for a week? It's usually a day. A day? Yeah. yeah. So I can walk in, take it, do my thing, and just return, oh, that's return it to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great for the dealerships. It's like getting somebody to make a commercial for you, but you don't pay them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I look at it this way. Hey, I'm being paid and living my dream. Yeah, you yeah. get to drive anything you want. Anything I want. And, oh, I'm sure they're not going to give me like a $300,000 car, but still. <laughs> no, you never know. <laughs> never know, yeah. That's amazing. What's the coolest bike you've ridden? Oh. Your favorite. Oh, there, it's going to be, I've thought about this question a lot because people ask me this many times. I think it's going to be, a, it's at a three-way tie and these are like very different bikes. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the Pursuit, the Indian Pursuit, the Ducati Panigale V4S. Wow. Oh my God, that thing is just bonkers. <laughs> that thing is just bonkers. You get to ride it? I did. It was the most Power. fun I've had on two wheels. Nah. On the streets. The Italian bikes are nuts. It's like they're, it's like having a Timex versus having a Rolex. Everything just feels so well put together. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, I don't know, it just sounds like the sound that the bike makes are so mechanical. It's, I don't know, it just feels right. It just, it appeals to all of your senses, not just the sight, the sight, the hearing, the smell, everything. It's yeah. just that. And the third one is the Triumph Rocket 3, man. That thing is like a, a cruiser, and but it's put up, it puts out, what, 180 horses or something like that. So it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, I've rode it on a horse before, and so is that one horsepower? <laughs> that's, that's one horsepower. That's one horsepower. One yeah. horsepower. Yeah. 180 <laughs> horses. That's a lot of horses. That is. Yeah. And the Ducati puts out, what, 210? Wow. Yeah. Mm. I'd probably fall off it. Nah, you'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to have a motorcycle, but I like the Indian Scout with the matte finish. Oh, yeah, job. that's a beautiful bike. I've been ogling that for weeks. Hey, man, just do it. Hey, if you want, if you're looking to buy it, let's let me know. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have this charity side to you, which is really cool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. I, I did this ride last year as well. I went coast to coast, did 8,300 miles in 18 days. And uh, the charity I support is the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. They have this charity run called Ride for Kids. This is for motorcyclists to raise funds. And they do a little ride around, like, every. there's a state chapter or city chapter even. And we usually do a little loop around Jordan Lake. I think in September. I might be off on the dates, but I think it's in September. So last year I got this idea, like, hey, if I'm going to go coast to coast, why not do it for a cause as well? Why not? Use that passion to do something for the greater good as well. Let's give back. Because yeah. uh, God knows people have helped me throughout my life, not just for my channel, but just everything in life. So I'm like, yeah, let's try to give back. That's awesome. How much money did you raise last year? So my goal was $10,000 and I got twelve. Oh. Yeah, okay. so I went over by 2000 Nice. I had a big donor, so <laughs> that helped. Yeah. Now, so this year, I wanted to do this again this year. And the foundation folks... They were, they reached out and they're like, Hey, I, do you want to do something this year? I'm like, yeah, let's go do it. And oh, last year, let me, I forgot to mention that the last year, once I decided to do the ride and everything, BMW lent me a bike for the trip, the R18 Transcontinental. Wow. Uh, yeah. They let me take it coast to coast. No like, kidding. like it's got Transcontinental in the name. Yeah. They're like, come on, let's go. <laughs> That's amazing. And I made a video vlog of like day one through day 18. Yeah. Now, what a freaking just slog, man. 18 days, you're talking, you said some of your rides would be 16-hour days? There, are, um, Yeah, and so you go from, <clears throat> and the temperatures go from 100, and, it was 102 degrees in Arkansas with 80% humidity uh -uh. to, uh, yeah. Uh, 
to col- to when I got to Colorado up to Silverton and doing the million dollar highway, it was raining like crazy with temperatures in the 40s. Oh my gosh, that's miserable. But it was but it looked so pretty, it looked so beautiful. If you look at the mountains with that little mist, oh my god. Yeah. And then guess what I did the next day? Yeah, it was the next day. I went through Arizona and Utah. But that was rain all day. So riding through rain all day. Oh, man. And the day after that was Nevada. And it was 120 degrees with no humidity, pretty much. And you've got all kinds of gear on. I do. All, yeah. So like it's, Nevada is just flat as junk, right? That's like the loneliest road in America. Yes, I did that on my way back, too. But <laughs> it was just like 120, oh, 120 degrees with 40 mile per hour crosswinds. Oh, my God. Woo! So imagine this. Like, you're I'm happier on that R18 thing weighs a ton. <laughs> I know. And just imagine this. So I'm on a straight road. Like you can see for miles. But just to go straight and counterbalance the wind, I'm either hanging off on the left side or on the right side, depending <laughs> oh on which way the winds, the crosswinds are coming from. Do you have from. a support crew? Or you got a no, vehicle? Just, just no, you? <laughs> I wish. No, it's just me. That's incredible. I'm like, come on. If you got to be a badass, you got to do it just by yourself. <laughs> Where did you, where'd you stay? Did you do any camping? Just, uh... No, nah, I didn't do any camping. I was I was just like, let's ride. And whenever I'm like, yeah, I'm done for the day, just find a place and crash. Yeah. Oh, what was the time you woke up? What's the time you got on the bike? What's the time you oh, off and went to bed? I can only tell you which what time I used to start on a daily basis. <laughs> Anywhere between 9.30 and 10 is when I would get on the bike and start going. What time I stopped would depend upon how many breaks I took, how much distance I had to cover up or whatever. Because keep in mind, like there were days where I couldn't cover a lot of miles. Like Colorado, I just did 200 mile, 220 miles in one day. But that's because of the weather and just because it's so scenic. And I was stopping pretty much at every overlook. I'm like, come on, let's just take it in. Yeah. And then there are the, Colorado is pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then there are some days where I was on the bike for about 16 hours. I can't imagine. From 10 o'clock in the morning to 2.30 in the morning. Now, what do you do to keep yourself entertained for 16 hours? You're just trying to direct the bike is enough? Yeah. Riding on a motorcycle, but I don't know. Maybe I'm a little weird or whatever, but like when I'm on the bike, I'm just so excited the whole time. The child in me is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's a bike. Yeah, I think that's pretty common. <laughs> I think too, also. Everything's doing something. Like it's tough to zone out on a motorcycle. Yeah. Every limb has a job yeah. and you can't move it forward. Like in a car, you can like half pay attention, drive with your knee and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's not really the same thing on a motorcycle. Yeah. yeah. So you're just engaged. Yeah. You're not in something going somewhere. Like you're outside driving a machine. It's hard to explain the difference between, but like not having a windshield, huge difference. Like yeah. just so different yeah. than yeah. being in a car. Do you have like radio or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. It's got, it had radio, navigation, all of that stuff. So to, to stay focused, I always listen to some sort of music, any kind of music. As lo- no, let me take that back. Not like the slow-paced music that kind of puts me to sleep, but <laughs> anything rock. Like, no Brahms? No. Yeah. <laughs> so rock, hip-hop, anything like that just keeps it going. And then just looking around and seeing the views and whatnot, that's enough and Keep you focused. Oh, and drinking lots of water, lots and lots of water. I'm like, it's okay to drink more and having to pee more often than drinking less, being dehydrated, and then just dozing off on the bike. You had a Camelback, right? I did. The Camelback is a, that was a lifesaver, man. So like every gas station that I'd stop to fill up gas, I'd fill it up with water, put like a cup of ice in it to keep it nice and cool, especially on those hot days, man. Oh my gosh, like yeah. The, Cold water, oh. What do you think is the most amount of liters you drank on the ride? What day do you think, how many liters do you think that was? I don't know. I mean, it would have to be Nevada. That heat was just killing me. Yeah. Probably had to refill that sucker like four times. Yeah. So what, four or five times. How much did it hold? I think it was like two liters or two and a half. So eight liters. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. everybody can picture a two liter drink. Imagine yeah. four of those in a day. That is nuts. But and that you was, were probably still dehydrated. Yeah, because it was hot, man. Yeah. It's like hot and I have all that. I have my jacket on, my riding pants on, my boots on. Yeah. The bike's getting hot. Now, are you pretty sore from all the the balancing and core changes? Not so much, but yeah. your butt surely gets very sore. Your butt and your hamstrings. Hammies, butt, yeah, those things. Just toast. They are toast, yeah. And especially on the bike that I was riding, the way the foot peg position is, like we Joe and I were just talking about this a little earlier, you know, 
when you have the foot pegs right below you, your feet are like scrunched. But like on bigger bikes, you can throw your feet forward, stretch them out. Uh, and that really helps. Yeah. And yeah. Imagine, if you will, squatting for four hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm good. <laughs> yeah, and there are stretches you can do to limber up a little bit as well as you're riding. Without being too crazy, you can still stretch your feet out, your legs out, your hands, your arms, your torso. Now, and Any issues with inconsiderate drivers? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of them. Plenty of them. I wish I could say no. Everybody's very very focused and stuff, but no. Yeah, people cut across all the time because they're not used to seeing a bike. Yeah. Cut across and on the highways. And intersections, coming up on blind intersections, that's like my worst nightmare always. Someone's always blow, always blowing a stop sign. So yeah. you just have to be careful. Yeah, there's something like some invisible quality to motorcycles for motorists. Like you just have to assume they're going to not follow the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah defensive driving. You just got to think one step ahead. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't pull out when I'm turning left. Like I don't get halfway in the intersection on a motorcycle like yeah. you do in a car. Yeah. Because people just don't see you. Yeah. So I just wait back at the line until it's clear to go. Yeah. yeah I've had that. Like people, someone, a lady once pulled up out of a, coming out of a little strip mall joint. And she was making eye contact with me the whole freaking time. And she stopped like right halfway in my lane. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, if you're going to do that, just yeah. just go full speed and get the hell out of my way. Or just don't just stop in front. What am I supposed to do now? Hey, Fire Within Nation. Has this ever happened to you? You go online to find a quick recipe for mashed potatoes. But first, you have to hear about Grandfather's Farm in 1929. When I was a boy. <laughs> The first time you had a potato, and like six and a half chapters later, you get to the ingredient list. Tasted like dirt. Drives me nuts. So me and Joe have worked to solve that issue for you. If you head to firewithinnf.com and check out the recipe section, healthy recipes, following the Fire Within way. And it's just the recipe, no blog, you're welcome. You'll find recipes like steak chimichurri. There's a bananas foster smoothie recipe. There's a sourdough French toast. Lots of healthy things. Make your own ranch dip and, and tons more. So head to firewithinnf.com. Check out the recipe section and enjoy. Do, do you also get a lot of thumbs up? From motorcyclists? Yeah, yeah. Well, is there like, I know Jeeps, like if you drive a Jeep, there's a Jeep wave. Yes, is there something there's, there's for the There's a motor? biker wave, yes. Yeah. There's a biker wave. Is that wave. a middle finger? What is it? What's <laughs> the biker wave? <laughs> it's just you, you hold out the peace sign, but downwards. Two, okay. Two fingers, yeah. Two fingers, yeah. I have the Royal Enfield. It's an Indian-made bike, and it started in World War II, and its motto is uh, built like a gun. And so if I ever see somebody else on a Royal Enfield, they do one finger. That's like a finger gun. gun. That's what my nine-month-old is into now. He does a lot of <laughs> finger guns and pointing. So that's pretty cool. But I never see anybody else on a Royal Enfield. It's yeah. very uncommon. Yeah. It's a good bike, though. It's a good-looking bike, too. Especially the chromed-out one Joe's got. Ooh. That's pretty. I like shiny objects. I'm sure. So do I, man. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you get hooked up with the Pediatric Foundation for Brain Tumors? How do you say that again? A Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Solid PBTF, order. yeah. PBTF. So they do, uh, they, they have a, the initiative is called Ride for Kids. And they do that every year here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and in other cities around the U.S. Where we, you come together as a group of bikers, like you don't have to be in the same group, you meet and they take you on a little loop. It's a, like a police-led escort where they have they block off high they block off intersections and stuff. Okay. You don't stop at red lights because you have a police escort, and they take you on a nice one-hour loop around Jordan Lake through some of the most pretty and curvy roads that you can that I've seen around in this area. So that's how I started doing this. And you raise funds before the ride, and you get to meet some of the kids. They call them stars. So who are the survivors of brain cancer and brain tumor? Mm -hmm. And the thing that really got me hooked onto this was the first time that I went for this ride and you meet some of these kids and they bring them out and they're in the lead vehicles for on the ride. The vehicles, with the motorcycles with a sidecar, or maybe a, they'll be on like a Can-Am or a slingshot, something like that. They come out and when we all start our bikes, you should just see the expression on the kids' <laughs> faces, man. Like they light up. That, that, that to me just reminded of me of me when I was a kid and I'd see a motorcycle and I'd just light up. Heck, even now, like when I see a motorcycle, my face just lights up just like that. I remember before I got one, like it was a similar feeling to like when I'm gone from home too long and I miss my kids or wife, when I would see a motorcycle, it would be like, oh, heart hurts. <laughs> I want to be there. <laughs> yeah. So no, 
that just resonated with me uh, a lot. And I was like, hey, let's do this. And th that's one thing that I've been always trying to find my way of giving back. So like my mom, she passed away in 2012. But she used to do a lot of things for underprivileged kids in India. Just helping them, paying their tuition, getting them books, getting them to schools, whatever. And so I wanted to do that. I wanted to take her legacy forward, but put a twist on it, like in my way. And this was like perfect. I love motorcycles. I love the kids. So why not bring these two together? And I reached out to the foundation folks. I'm like, hey, can, can, would you be okay if I did something like this for y'all? And they were like, let's do it. Yeah, man. And they're like, yeah, you're going to be like the first person doing this for us. Um, I'm like, at that point, like I was a baby YouTuber. <laughs> I had about 1,100 subscribers or something in that range. And they took a chance on me. And I'm very grateful they did because I was able to raise those funds for them. And now this year, at this time, like the subscriber base has gr grown like six times. So I'm hoping I can. So this year I have a bigger goal. I'm going for 20000 Let's raise $20,000. Let's see. How would people donate for this? How would they find you? What's the contact them? And then what's your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is Broman, B-H. You can search for me at like at the rate B-H-R-O-M-A-N. I go Broman Rhapsody. And I'll send you a link and I have, I'm have i going to have flyers out. Yeah, we'll um, get it on the show notes. Yeah. And I'll put the link to my fundraising page for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. And when people, when you go and donate on that page, it goes directly to the foundation. It's like directly to the foundation's page. So you can, and that's a 501c3 foundation. So you can claim those donations on your cool. tax return as well. All of it goes there. I don't get a single penny out of that, but it's for them. When's your ride start? I'll leave on the 30th of June. So it's, so it's from up. June 30 to July 18th, 18 days again. And you just leave work? Do you have to take vacation for that? Yes, I take my time off, two weeks time off, and try to put the 4th of July in there, got yeah, a free yeah. day. It's an incredible experience. It is. You asked me yesterday what keeps me going. There are some nights when I'm riding and it's I'm just tired, like my butt's hurting, my back's tired, and just it's been rain all day and... What keeps me going on those days is I'm like, come on, man, like I'm doing this for a cause. The kids who are battling with brain cancer and brain tumor, they're dealing with far bigger problems and far more pain than what I am right, yeah. feeling right now. And I'm supposed to be doing this and something I love. So, so quit, you can do it. I tell myself, like, quit bitching. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Pain in the butt, literally. I'm a pain in my wife's ass. I wonder if it's this, <laughs> if it's just as painful. But anyhow. We'll have um, to get her on the show to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun. Well, you get some good publicity. I'm just grateful for every opportunity that comes to me. And as I'm trying to do this, like, out help with get as many people, get this out to as many people as possible. <laughs> as many ears, eyes, sets of eyes. It's, yeah. just, it's, it's a great cause. And yeah. it's not because I'm writing for it. My ride is nothing compared to how good and how great the cause is. Yeah. And all the effort that I'm putting into, I mean, come on, it's for this amazing cause, for these amazing kids yeah. who are going through a really tough time. And yeah. they deserve all the help that we can give them. So we'll try and get you back on once you complete the ride and do the follow-up episode. Yeah, okay. that'll be fun. Yeah. I can tell you about my adventures or misadventures. Let's there see. you go. <laughs> Oh, this has been great. So if people want to contact you directly, is it just through your YouTube page or do you have a different website or contact info? Oh, it's through my website and I have an email ID there. It's just basically bromanbrapsody at gmail.com. Cool. That's my YouTube channel at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, this is awesome. We'll definitely put the link for the how you can donate into the show notes. So be sure to look for that. So if you follow me on, if you follow Broman on Facebook, it's same thing at Broman. I post a daily updates of my ride, my start, my day, all the cool things I've seen. I'll be recording every day. And once I'm back is when I'll sit down and sift through 300 gigs of videos to make daily vlogs that come out. After, but that'll be after I come back and have some time to sit down and think through it. But yeah, but yeah if you follow me on my Facebook page for Broman, I'll have daily updates posted there. B-H-R-O-M-A-N. All right, man. Thanks for doing the show. Hey, man. Thank you guys for having me on this. I had so much fun. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. If you did, 
Go check us out at firewithinnf.com and sign up for Refuel, a weekly email with recipes, videos, and tips to stoke the fire within. Also, you can join the Fire Within community by being added to our Facebook group. And don't forget to follow us on social media.